Here it is, another bamboo speculation video. Let's do it! So a quick recap. A few months ago, we discussed the Bamboo H2D, and we referenced these patent diagrams and a couple of other pieces that had been leaked, perhaps. Then a week or so ago, we were given this picture. It showed the alleged machine as well as some other goodies like an updated AMS and what we presume to be a laser module sitting on top. <sighs> this machine is going to be expensive. Shortly after that, Bamboo made an announcement and began releasing new images of the machine. So let's take a second to break them down. Let's talk about the dual extruders again. Servo motors versus stepper motors. A fancy super accurate scanner or LiDAR upgrade. The new AMS with built-in filament dryer. And finally, the laser module. This is all speculation, it's subject to change, and I'm just in it for the easy views. Definitely not because I'm a fanboy that's excited about the machine. Certainly not that. But if you're into it, hop on the hype train with me and let's speculate a little bit more. So dual extruders. If you weren't aware, this is a thing. Worst kept secret, watch my other videos. In fact, this was speculation from the very first video that I did a few months back, and now it's been confirmed. Now in my last video, I wasn't certain that the patent images we looked at in the first video really lined up with the leak from the second video, or my previous video. That was hard to follow. So the patent diagram showed a pivoting kind of tool head, and that's what puts each nozzle in or out of service. Now the image that we saw a week or so ago didn't quite match up with that, but again, it was kind of hard to tell. So it could be something that's still being implemented. We just can't see underneath the fascia of the tool head. So it could be in there, we just can't tell. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Speculation, remember? There isn't a lot of information available about how that tool head swaps and retracts and extends. There's some gears hiding in there, and this graphic shows actually a couple of different gear sets. So something crazy's happening in there. Also, the two nozzles appear to be the A1 style quick swappable ones instead of the semi-permanent ones that you'd find on the P1S or the X1 Carbon, for example. You like that? I like that. So this could unlock some convenient possibilities. So for example, you could have a 0.4 nozzle on one side, swap to a 0.8 on the other side, and use the really chunky nozzle to do infill while you use the finer one to take care of the outer perimeters of your piece. So you get faster model printing time and nice crispy outside edges. It's super exciting to think about this because you don't even have to commit one way or the other. You can just swap nozzles as you need. Man, this machine is going to be expensive. Also looking towards the extruder, it looks like the nozzles are sharing a common extruder motor. That makes the most sense because this tool head's likely gonna be pretty heavy just because of all the added pieces that it's gonna have. And as I'm sure Bamboo's not trying to go backwards in speed, this is going to help them overcome the issue of what I can only imagine is a considerable weight gain in the tool head department. Which brings me to my last point, the weight. It seems like they're packing quite a bit into this one tool head. Looking at the graphic, there's a whole gear set at the top of the tool head, and that's likely responsible for the extruder, and maybe it's reduction gears and that sort of thing. But if we look towards the bottom of the tool head, there's a whole nother gear set that's probably responsible for the the two nozzles being retracted and pushed into service. And we learned about how much thought goes into the weight of your tool head when we swap the internals of our P1S using the BQ stuff, because all of the pieces that we put in were lightened to account for the hardened extruder gear that we also installed. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here and how they combat the extra weight. So the next graphic that we were given was regarding servo motors, but real servo motors. Since they're specifying these as true servo motors, I can only imagine that they're stabbing at the Creality K2 a little bit, which came with servo stepper motors. But this printer shipping with true servo motors, not servo stepper motors, could very well be a huge game changer. Man, this machine is just going to be so expensive. So there's endless debates on servo motors versus stepper motors on the internet, and which is better and why, and I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna kind of break down the little bit of information that I was able to gather on these two. So from that limited research that my smooth brain was able to conduct, Here's what I found out. It seems like the servo motor likely has more of an upside than the stepper motor. As I understand it, we use stepper motors currently for a couple of different reasons. They're not good reasons, but this is how we've gotten to where we are. Stepper motors are cheap and they are readily available. Additionally, they're simple and they work. Kind of the whole, if it's not broke, don't fix it sort of thing. So why would we want a servo now? What would that have to offer that the humble stepper motor can't already achieve. Well, from what I've read, it's really just a matter of a position sensor. Typically, we see the use of a rotary encoder to keep the position of the motor. This allows for closed loop strategies to be employed during operation, and that makes for more exact movements. 
Now in the case of the Creality K2 using servo stepper motors, they've probably got the traditional stepper motor in there with a position sensor added to it as well. So they get the benefit of a cheaper motor that still has the closed loop control. Well, what's closed loop control and why do we care about that? Let's say, for example, your printer gets bumped during operation. Now a simple stepper motor, it's gonna get jarred and lose track of where it's at. And maybe your print continues from there, but your motor's not gonna know how to get back to the model accurately because it's lost steps. Without going back to home to get a reference for where it's at in space, your print's not gonna do well. Now a closed loop motor, so servo motors in this case, or a servo stepper motor, they're constantly gathering position data on that motor in real time. That means if the machine's bumped, the motor's gonna know exactly how far off track the motor was moved. No need to home, it just knows how to compensate to get right back to the exact precise spot. And there's plenty of machines out there that do closed loop control already, but I haven't heard of any of the mainstream guys using proper servo motors. So it'll be interesting to see what benefits those actually offer when implemented on a machine. And to that end, is Bamboo going to use this on just the motion system of their machine? Or is like every motor on the machine going to be a servo motor? That'll also be interesting. All right, the scanner. So this graphic shows a scanner of some description, and that could just be an upgraded micro LiDAR sensor, or it could be something completely different. I have no idea. Judging by the tagline though, speaking about the accuracy not needing to be super expensive, it's gotta be something that's packing more features than just an upgraded micro LiDAR. But if I had to guess, or speculate. I would imagine this is just an upgraded thing that has a specific emphasis on accuracy. So whether we see the benefit of that accuracy when it's scanning the first layer of a print, or if it's doing the pressure advanced stuff and scanning that line that it puts down before every print, or whether it's implemented with the laser module. I don't really know what's gonna happen with it, but they're really focusing on accuracy. Now judging by the fact that this is one of the standout features they decided to announce in this same way as they're announcing these other pieces, this thing could be so accurate that it provides some additional functionality that I'm not familiar with. But why do we care about accuracy, really? Well, what I do know about CNC machines, for example, is when you get to higher levels of accuracy, you get to higher levels of cost as well. So that's what your money gets you, more and more precise pieces being manufactured. When it comes to 3D printing, I'm not sure what this greater level of accuracy is gonna offer, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Beyond the pressure advanced scanning and the first layer scanning, I'm not sure what we're going to see from this micro LiDAR, but if something comes to mind for you, go ahead and comment below and let me know, because I can't figure it out. Maybe there's something huge here and obvious that I'm missing. I'm sure you're going to let me know anyway, so go ahead. Now onto that fresh new AMS. It appears to be confirmed to have a filament dryer. This is another one of those features that absolutely needed to be included. It would be such an absolute whiff if Bamboo did not include this in their new AMS. This has me really excited, but let's dive into the tagline a little bit. So Bamboo's displaying here, heating is not the same as drying. That's a sentiment that many of you have expressed in the comments section of my filament dryer videos. Seriously, it's like the most common comment. So when you're using a filament dryer to heat up a filament to extract moisture out of it, that moisture has to go somewhere. Like it's good to get it out of the filament so it's not in there when you're trying to print with it. But where does it go after that? It really doesn't do any good to get the moisture out of the filament if it's still stuck inside that box that your filament's stuck in. So you do need a way to properly evacuate that moisture as well. So in the case of these poly dryers and these poly dryer boxes, these little tiny holes on the side of the unit are actually the exhaust ports. We found that out when we did the poly dryer plus AMS enclosure combination videos. So the filament goes in that box wet, the dryers turn on and heat everything up to cook the moisture out of the filament. The air is circulated using the poly dryer and then the moisture is evacuated out of these little tiny exhaust ports. And this is the main portion of filament drying in general that's overlooked. Sure, it's good to get the moisture out of the filament, but we do need to get the moisture completely out of the system as well. And this graphic clearly displays Bamboo's emphasis on exhausting the moisture as well as extracting the moisture. Gah, this machine is going to be expensive. I'm stoked about this feature. It's been a long time coming, and as somebody that's been reviewing the Anycubic S1, I've got to say it's like the most convenient thing having a built-in dryer in your multicolor box. You hear that? That's the machine in the background right now. I had to film this fast so I didn't get to plan in between prints. I would imagine after Bamboo throws this into their multicolor box, everybody that puts out a multicolor box or everybody that has put one out is going to be pushing this feature too. Finally, the laser. This is the big one. 
Let's look at this picture a bit. I don't know a lot about lasers, but the most notable feature we're gathering here is the color. So the blue laser in the picture finally solidifies the suspicions that we've had about a laser module being included with this machine, but also, it's a blue laser, not just any laser. And then this also lines up with the green tinted glass that we saw on the front of the machine in the recent leak. That stops you from going blind, because lasers will make you blind. Now the other thing that I briefly gathered from looking into blue lasers is they're generally used in high precision applications, which sort of goes in line with our super precise and accurate LiDAR system that they've been pushing. So I would imagine these two pieces are going to be used in conjunction with each other in some way that I'm not seeing. Again, I don't know a lot Lot about lasers but higher levels of accuracy cannot be a bad thing so the laser thing kind of came out of left field for me and like i said in the last video i don't really care yet but like i also said in the last video if bamboo implements a laser into one of their designs i would imagine it's going to catch on even more than it already has bamboo has a history of implementing products and technologies in ways that become really accessible for users so it's not even a new or original idea necessarily it's just their implementation of it that makes it so accessible so there's plenty of user-friendly lasers out there that have bolstered the community. Things like Xtool and Glowforge I think are pretty common ones that are generally user friendly. So that hobby has quite a following as it is but I can't even imagine what's going to happen if Bamboo begins to bolster this hobby as well. Like it's going to blow up. So there it is. That's what we were given. Bamboo went full Apple and gave us pretty graphics to pour over. And here I am once again playing into their hand like a hopeless fanboy that has nothing better to do. But Tell me what I missed in the comments so we can all learn together. And while you're down there, if you want to tell me how much of a loser I am for making a whole nother speculation video, I'll allow it. Are you excited for this machine? Is it going to be too pricey for you, perhaps? I know my wallet already hurts just thinking about it, and I don't even know how many thousands of dollars it's going to hit me for. Bye!